Yeah. So we have right here. Can we just clear the area, please? We got there about 90 seconds after Corporal Cirillo was shot, or two minutes. He was um, on the ground, and he was getting CPR by three people. One of them's uh, civilians, a nurse, uh, before the ambulance had come. We ran right up um, and asked what, what had happened, uh, and they said he'd been shot. Uh, and so we were about two or three feet away. We were right over him. Everybody, can we just clear the area? And then they said, you know, we thought people should get back, and people were starting to gather. Uh, immediately we realized something horrible had happened, and we called the desk. I took a picture of the scene right away, and within a, a minute we were on air on CBC News Network um, describing the scene. Evan, what are you seeing? I just spoke to a police officer who said the soldier was guarding the war memorial, and the police are now putting us onto the side. They're performing CPR. Finally, the ambulance came. Um, they put him on the stretcher and they were still working on him very hard and they took him literally right by us. There was not an emotional reaction at first. The reaction really is, and I think anybody who's a reporter, their reaction is, what is happening? What is, what is the story? No, we're not the story. You know, our feelings aren't the story. The story is the people who are in the middle of it and you know the story was instantly who is that guard over the war memorial who was just shot what's his status and I, I just remember very clearly thinking how do we piece this puzzle together uh, are we witnessing a lone gunman are we witnessing a coordinated attack are we witnessing um, a massacre. And he shot, I watched him shoot him. There was a car over here, he got into a car and drove away. And then I ran up to Parliament because we had then heard there were shots inside Parliament. Oh, 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 no, 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 We ran up the hill and as I was running up the hill, police were running down the hill saying, get off the hill, you're in danger. Uh, this is a very dangerous situation. There was the assumption that there was a shooter on the outside. And then two cops pushed me back to the east gate. And then right in front of the east gate, there was a Toyota Corolla beige with no license plate. I said, whose car is that? And two officers said, that's the suspect's car. Uh, an officer just told us the Toyota Corolla is parked outside right now. It's not cordoned off or right beside it. We were just told to stay away from it. The scene was becoming very, very fluid. And then I remember we were sitting around the cart, and all of a sudden, I, as I realized what was happening, I said to the police, have you checked the trunk of this car? And the police officer looks at me, and he says, Get back. Everybody back up, right okay. now. Okay, sir. Keep moving, please. So then they immediately push us back, and then the perimeter very quickly starts to widen across the road. Then they push us another block back. And we sense the lockdown is happening. We were still piecing together. What No one knew what was happening inside Parliament, and no one knew what was happening outside. Rumors were flying that there was one shooter, two shooters, three shooters. So I remember this moment where my phone was dead. I realized the perimeter was widening, and now it was widening to engulf the CBC building. And then I realized I was about to lose contact with the story, and there's nothing you can do. And I thought, I gotta get back to the Bureau. And then I got on air with Peter Mansbridge. Evan Solomon uh, has been standing by. What's the latest you can tell us? There's a tweet that just came out from inside caucus. If you zoom in there, what you're seeing is a tweet out. This is inside the NDP's caucus room. And look right here, Peter. Those are chairs stacked up against the doors. You cannot email from caucus. Once you're behind caucus doors, anything that happens has to be remain private. It's a long-standing parliamentary rule. Obviously, this day was different. 
people were tweeting out pictures of the chairs stacked. And people were sending messages, but there was a new understanding, don't name us, but we want to say what's happening uh, because they were scared. One minister told me she wrote a letter to um, her family that this could be it. Um, many of them just thought they were under attack and for the, those critical moments uh, they just thought th that they were about to be gunned down because there was so much gunfire outside of their door. And that was a moment where all of them have said and privately and publicly it was terrifying for them. So we have confirmation now that one shooter is dead. The next day, the MPs decided they would work. And they all came back to work, which was an extraordinary day. The most extraordinary day I can remember on Parliament Hill. They were shell-shocked. They had cleaned up a very bloody mess outside the wooden doors of the Parliamentary Library where Bebo's body was shot. Kevin Vickers, a man who who had that final confrontation with Bebo, takes the mason, those extraordinary pictures where he is given that standing ovation. It's extraordinary, I love watching that. And it was a very emotional day. So that, being in Parliament for those 48 hours after it was, I'll never forget that.